Take four, you freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Episode 28 oh. finally kicking off after a few, uh, <laughs> few, few technical fuck-ups. It's regulars Danny and Briss. Here for a little Tuesday afternoon throwdown. Throwdown indeed. Joined by two martial arts enthusiasts and martial artists themselves. Uh, return guest uh, Justin has come up from the Gold Coast and uh, another martial arts man, Simon Di Maria. Welcome, my friend. What's up, boys? Hey. Hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. Good to have you back, bro. Justin, it's been, um, it's been a while. Like, uh, I believe the last time we spoke, you were just about to have your first fight. And, um, and so subsequently for anybody who doesn't know, Justin had a, um, a second fight lined up, which you were probably, you know, you, from all, all, all sort of visuals on, online and stuff, you were in, in the peak fucking performance of your life, what seemed, um, getting ready to fucking really focus in and, and, and take your second fight and um, struck with a fucking broken ankle. Uh, the, literally the last training session before the, before yeah. the fight, wasn't it? Yeah. You, it's something that you would like... Right, uh, you know, in a story, if you were trying to, yeah, like yeah, right it. at the critical moment. Yeah. So, so um, explain what the um, explain what the injury actually was. So, like, what did you break, uh, and so and the, what's the sort of prognosis and everything like that? Uh, basically, the, the my right fibula, the the bottom uh, end of it, so the malleolus, the part, the the bony bit that you can see on your ankle. Right. I basically snapped that off the bottom of the bone, um, and. Yeah, it wasn't fun. <laughs> it's been pretty much posted up in bed ever since. It had yeah. happened in a drilling in the final session before your fight. Yeah, uh, so up against the cage. Yeah, so we were just doing some like simple takedown drills against the wall, and um, I sort of got a bit lazy as I was like, you know, not lazy. I shouldn't say lazy. I met like a little bit sloppy in the last last one because it was the last round. You know, I was completely gassed. Last session before the fight, so I'm you know really feeling it. I stick my leg. Something that I've done, you know, countless times before in the le- like the weeks leading up, and just the, f- the 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 angle of the foot when it landed, and the pressure like as my weight went through it, and then the person that I was taking down, where his legs got caught up and tangled, my foot got locked in place, and my basically my shin tore like counterclockwise as I fell to the right, um, and yeah, like we both felt it as soon as it, as soon, like before we even hit the ground, we both heard the like three little cracks, right. and then um, as soon as like I, my back hit the ground, I was like, fuck, that was bad, I felt it, and like nothing, I didn't feel pain straight away, because I guess I was uh, adrenaline and shock, you know, all that sort of stuff, and then I was like, oh, maybe it's all right, maybe it's just like, it was just like, you know, a, a, a ligament that I've sprained or something, and I've just like rolled it really bad. So I was, you know, hopeful for a second and then I put my foot on the ground and then, like, it kind of went floppy a little bit and I was like, no, nah, that's bad. And then everyone, like, there was a couple of coaches watching and they all, like, said, sit down, don't, don't try and get up. We all saw that angle of your, your leg. So just sit down and they, they basically just chucked me in the back of the car, took me to the emergency, got an X-ray and, yeah, you've, uh, it's a Weber B fracture. So you was- have to have surgery, uh, have, like, four-inch plate, eight screws, holding... All the ankle together, and, yeah. Was the ride to the hospital just excruciating? Um, was... It wasn't actually until I got all the way to the hospital, got triaged, got in straight away, and then it wasn't until I sat down and probably like sort of calmed down after like sort of ten minutes of sitting there waiting for like me like waiting for an X-ray, and then then it started to set in when my adrenaline came down. Like I started to cool down, and then everything started to set in. But by the time that mm. that started happening, they were like, you, we'd give some pain relief for you, so they'd give me some endone, so it wasn't so bad. Did they get you on the green whistle? No, nah, no green whistle, because the green whistle's um, for the ambulance, apparently. Uh, so okay. once you get there, they've got better stuff there anyway. Right, the yeah, The green whistle's just for, like, the ambulance. Portable yeah. aspect of it, yeah, shit. It's just a one and done, sort of like, mm. one hit, and that gets you, and you know, the car ride there, and then once yeah. you're in hospital, you're And fine. so you've had a second procedure to take that um, metal work out uh, now, no, have you? Or? 8th of June. Right, yeah. right. So another couple of weeks. Right, and so you're you're obviously, have you still got the moon boot on, or? No, I've recently, this week, I've just been, I've been, I'm back in, like, just a little... Soft brace around my ankles. Okay. So, yeah, I've been back on the um, push bike and in the pool, sort of like every couple of days. All right. Yeah, back. just water walking and stuff. Water walking, um, doing a lot of resistive stuff with bands. I'm back doing cryotherapy every sort of ten days as well. So, um, get in there like minus ninety degrees. What's that like, man? It's pretty intense. Um, it's. I'm such a pussy when it comes to like extreme temperature shit. Even in the sauna, I'm good for five minutes. There's this old British dude at my gym who's like. 
fucking talk your ear off but he was like in the uh british services and shit back in the in the second world war and shit like that he's old as fuck and uh actually vietnam war sorry he's not quite that old (laughs) (laughs) he's like this hundred year old dude like (laughs) just chilling to gallipoli man but he does um he does like 15 minutes every morning in the sauna and um man i'm i'm ready to tap after like maximum six or something i reckon I love the extremes. I love I love the sauna and and that. I, the one thing I can't do is like ice baths. I just don't like that. Right. The contact of the the water. I've seen you trying so, some though. Like uh, yeah, I've done them a couple of times, yeah. but they're definitely. Uh, if I had to pick cold bath or the cryotherapy, I'd definitely choose the cryotherapy yeah. because uh, I don't know, just a dry cold instead a of a dry cold, cold. Yeah, it's. I think it's. Yeah, but they're both pretty pretty intense yeah <laughs> yeah well they if you think about like it's pretty morbid but um freezing to death would actually be a lot better than burning alive 100 percent. yeah if you had to choose one or the other. <laughs> Absolutely. they reckon you just go to sleep when you um yeah your body freezes to, to death shut down. yeah you yeah. just start to shut down but um yeah so how how sort of long till you, you said you sort of just um still chilling at jiu-jitsu school but are you actually rolling and stuff like that again no, yet no, or I no won't, i won't be i'm not rolling or no. training i'm just sort of like sitting on the mats and um, yeah. i still help out with the kids and stuff yeah but i just can't be physical or at all like now that i'm back on my feet the being on the mats is okay yeah. cuz bones are like uh you know they they continue to heal so they continue to get stronger get and stronger, stronger. Yeah. so like you know Technically, it's healed after four to six weeks or whatever the, the doctor gives you. But, um, you know, 12 months, 18 months, that bone's like getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, so exactly. There's probably, a, you know, a, like a curve to that where it... Where it yeah. Put bot- it this way, though. I'd rather, break, I'd rather bone. break a bone than a ligament. Like, I'd rather snap a bone than tear an ACL or something because a bone right. heals in six weeks, whereas an ACL, you know, you're out for nine yeah. months. Yeah. A friend of mine um, had to get surgery on his shoulder to um the bicep had basically snapped off the off the shoulder and uh and he had to get a screw to like screw this tendon back in place Ar- arms have never been the same again but it's fucking crazy to yeah. think about that sort of shit like the human body's just this machine and um and yeah fuck like it heals itself over time it's pretty incredible yeah you've got aspirations to get back to mixed uh, martial yeah, arts 100% yep. 100% yeah i i was feeling so good because because I kind of the first fight was just a bit of an eye opener, and then it kind of gave me an, a little bit of an insight of like really uh, a bit more to sort of game plan. And then we got to watch uh, my opponents uh, like previous fights, so we kind of got to sort of set a thing up and go, oh, okay, he likes to do this, he likes to do that, you know. So more of a fight plan. Up, more of a fight plan, exactly. So it gave me a, a hell of a lot more confidence going into the second one over the first one and then plus I was I was doing like a dedicated strength program a whole lot more cardio um, I had like a good sort of six weeks in advance to sort of prepare so I was I was feeling like way better about this one and I was I was really excited to see how I was going to go and like everyone that was like training with me and everything they were like you know you've really picked it up in the last sort of four to five weeks and really put put the hard yards in like we're mm. really excited to watch this and kind of the whole like thing about it is like I, I kind of felt like getting to that point letting other people like even though it's just like just a completely amateur fight not, nothing on the line nothing it was just like all these people that help you at training they come there and they, they put um, hours in they, like some people were helping me in the mornings when they didn't have to be there like put it, you know, giving an hour of their time hour and a half two hours of their time and then they, they want it as, as, as much as you do and it's like you feel that like sort of team aspect of it, and it really gives you like this uh, this uh, the another edge. It's, it's like going into it confidence Turns into wise. a team sport as yeah. well. You don't feel yeah. like yeah. alone as much. And so that that feeling of riding that wave going into that one, I was just like, man, this is going to be fucking awesome. We're going to really have fun this time, and like and be able to sort of like open up and and sort of think a bit more in there rather than just sort of getting like dropped in the tank sort of thing. Mm. And so I don't know. Yeah, I just I want to get that back. I know yeah. I can get back there, and I, know I just have to be patient with the injury and just yeah. So you would have gone through like a full weight cut and everything. No, you were ready because to go? because well, I had been dieting. I had been like because I do a little bit out of my diet the week before. I do most of it, you know, trimming down like portion sizes and everything. So I usually lose about two kilos doing that, and then I'll cut like three kilos of water. Yeah. So to I get down just, to one forty-five pounds. Yeah. Like, yep. Yeah. So. 
I walk around about 71, 72. So, yeah, 66 kilos, six kilos. You do three in, in your diet, three in water. It's pretty safe. Yep. So, it's like, yeah, there's no real drama with, like, head injuries and all that sort of... Obviously, there's drama with head injuries, but less water on the brain is what they really worry about when you're mm-hmm. dehydrated. So, it's not so bad. But, yeah, I hadn't started that yet. So, I was lucky. I hadn't done any of the, like, water loading or anything like that. So, no. No, hadn't done any of the weight cut. But I messaged the guy straight away when I told the promoter. And I was like, just in case he had started his already. And, like, to go right. through all that process. Yeah. I didn't want to make him do that. But That's then, good of you, yeah. Yeah. But then he ended up fighting anyway on that card. So, he, right. Yeah. How did he go? Uh, he lost. Okay. Yeah, decision. You've been through Would a taken that horrendous all weight you? cut, haven't you, Sire? Yeah, I've been uh, – yeah, one, one was really bad, yeah. Um, just quickly, just before we get on to that – uh, Justin had a couple questions for you. Um, the first one was, what was more painful? The injury itself or that whole lead up of every day, giving everything you possibly can um, for, for eight weeks and then knowing that you can't fight? Oh, definitely the mental part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah same. That let like down that. Is, the, is like, uh, yeah. I would take, if I had got to fight after that and then know that... Like, I would take two broken ankles to have that fight and then recover afterwards. Yeah. Like, having all that. <laughs> it's yeah. some shit. No, yeah. but seriously, no, but no, seriously yeah. you don't, yeah. you don't know. You fucking put in so much and I really fucking put everything. Like, you ask anyone that was around me those times, I really dedicated everything and it was like, I was like, fuck, this is going to be so good. And it was like this whole lead up and then just nothing. You don't get to, mm. to have that walk out. You don't get to have that feeling of like, being in there and letting it all out like mm. this this mm. feeling when you when when someone says Still to you, in you when someone says to you you're going to fight this person in a cage like there's obviously nerves like nerves build up and part of like overcoming all that stuff is part of the like appreciation you feel whether you win or lose but getting in there and just like and especially if you've put so much into it having that is is that feeling is what like I felt in the first one, which drew me straight back in to do it again. Like I was, I wasn't like set on going to do it after before the first one, but then after I did it, I was like, I've got to, I can do way better. So that you know, preparation, everything, and then just like you don't get that. It's just all take. It's yeah, it's it's hard to explain. That feeling of getting your hand raised has just got to be the ultimate, though, isn't it? It is. It mu- it must feel incredible. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah. It fucking does, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I got a couple of W's. <laughs> You've got your hand raised before, Simon. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Simon's my my last fight, career. I lost actually. Um, Ooh. But I didn't feel bad about it. No. Uh, which is strange. Um, a couple of reasons. My last fight was like uh, there was a bit of controversy. You know, I was training out of. Um, a really cool gym in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. Great trainers and everything, but. We just didn't, we didn't see eye to eye, you know, and um, I just felt I was almost like being bullied and I'm like, man, at the time I think I was 26, I'm like, I'm 26 years old, you know, I've been through high school, I've been bullied there, I don't want to be bullied in the yep. gym and... Yep. Um, but sort of like gym bully as in sort of hard, in, hard sparring. Like as in inspiring or just in... Um, attitude? Oh, like, just a bit of both, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, taking advantage of the fact that they know that they... Uh, are superior, yeah. you know, like like you know, small things, you know, yeah. hitting you when you're on the ground and is this and from tired. ties or from? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I understand that they've been doing it a lot longer than me. And I told them a hundred times. I said, "You are much better than me. You are much more experienced than me. I understand that. Please see that my respect for you is is the way I'm showing it is obviously not the right way." Um, because they felt like if I didn't do what they said to do, that I'm disrespecting them. And it was never really like that. It was like um, I'm at a certain age where and, – and knowledge, you know, like understanding science and understanding my body where, you know, I'm not a scientist, but like to the point where I understand that that's not good for you to do yeah. X. You know? <laughs> yeah, but enough. if they keep telling you that they, and you, you try and explain in, the, in, an, in a nice way mm. – no matter how you explain yourself, even if it's scientifically proven, if it's if the, that coach is telling you to do that, and you say he he not he's wrong, but uh, I'd rather do something else, mm. they just look down on you, and I, I was just so over it, man. I was so over being bullied, and two weeks before my fight, um, got into an altercation in the gym, 
where the the this is like you're doing your fight yeah. prep and shit like this. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting like last thing you need in a camp. Fuck's yeah. sake! Like yeah. well, total opposite to to yeah. <laughs> Justin's story. That, that Rumble Johnson, <laughs> like that's yeah. Why well, you got to find. That's why I have finding finding a good um, like crew gym, or, yeah. or team. Or yeah, whatever finding you a good call. fit. Yeah. You've just got to be comfortable and you've got to, that's part of, that's part of the journey is mm. finding somewhere where you can thrive and do the best. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's hard. It's, Cause it's, you hear a lot of people like, well, I've heard of people that, you know, go from gym to gym and then just can't really find the, the right fit. And then, you know, some people find it, some people don't. Mm. So did you do the whole camp with them and then go through the I, fight? What I were did. they like after the I, fight? I probably, I only had a four week camp. I got, it was like a late notice fight. Um, to jump in on the same fight card as the legendary Sunshine. Oh, so wow. I fought on the same card as Sunshine. Nice. Same night. Of course you get the call and say yes to that. Like, yeah. Oh, 100%, man. Yeah. I didn't care who... Well, yeah. my opponent I'm was... I'm on the Mayweather undercard. My right. opponent... <laughs> That's what it should be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, 100%, yeah. man. I was... I never... This is a weird thing about my... I, I don't want to call it a fighting career, but I, I've fought six times and every time I fight, it's my last fight, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah right. It's because I only do it um, when you out broke. of the circumstances. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Need to keep De- the heat on, man. <laughs> Definitely not when I'm broke, man. <laughs> Definitely. Punch Mon- my way out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Money is never uh, the motivation when you're at that level. You know, when you're at a higher level, yeah. But when yeah, you're a, a piece of shit. Yeah. It's just pure yeah. fucking your, heart. Your yeah. fucking, your, your energy drinks training is how much it costs it for your prize money. Like your prize money is like yeah. a month of energy drinks worth. Yeah. Like, it's just. <laughs> Dem Gatorade bills. Yeah, well, no, no, no shit, man. No shit. Like it's so you can't ever, especially Muay Thai, get into the sport to try and make money. No, you, of you, course, it's yeah. not going to work what, like that. Two guys in the world that have made money from Muay Thai. Yeah, Sanchai and Borkow. Yeah, yeah, that's. that's yeah, that, that's mm. legit. Mm. And like even Sanchai, he's not. He's man, not like he's rolling in it. He, yeah, he's not rolling in it, yeah. and. I, I know for a f- I know how much they get paid. Um, both of them somehow. I I, I was uh, it's kind of a long story, but I, I know how much. I hacked the yeah. I hacked their shit. In. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, I I dark say. web. Yeah. Allegedly, like Borkal gets a lot more than Sunshine, which is yeah, it's cool because everyone knows Borkal. But like to think that man, if. I, I just wish Sunshine was more famous, man. Like, if anyone had any idea how good he is. Like, to think that these foreigners who are, are you know, 8, 12 kilos heavier than him in these big events fighting him with, you know, S-A-E-N-C-H-I. Yeah, S-A-E-N-C-H. That chick, yeah. man. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> him, Sunshine. man, man. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there I mean, it's is. too late, man. Look at him. He's, thir- he's 36 years old, you know. And um, it's a bit of a it's it's a bit of a sad thing to to think that there's there's losers out there like shitty, I shouldn't say shitty professional fighters, but fi- <laughs> fighters that 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 just have nothing. Just throwing on everyone under the bus. Yeah. Yeah. You're all shitty. B U A K A W is Borka. <laughs> Danny Jones, <laughs> amateur. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, fucking uh, Mag- toy, Mitsubishi yeah. Magna here Probably, all yeah. over again. Probably, <laughs> This this young Jamie shit is new to me, eh? Like fucking having to to Google things as we <laughs> as we talk. We'll call, we'll call it, it anyway, I'll up. anyway I'll I'll finish that story. So <clears throat> had an altercation at the gym. I pretty much I got kicked out pretty much, and um, so I had two weeks before my fight and no gym to go to. So I went to Phuket, Thailand, and a man named uh, a Darren from old. Old Dogs coaching Phuket uh, took me under. Darren from Old Dogs. Yeah, yeah, Fuck man. Yeah. Oh, he's he's. I like a, the sound of him. I Definitely think, local. I think he's a <laughs> two two or three time Iron Man. Um, uh, just just a all around good guy. Uh, Is prof- Iron Man prof- like the same across the world? It's like a swim, a paddle, and a. It's and a, a mar- run? It's a marathon swim of all three. Run. Yeah, so yeah. it's the marathon. But the marathon is has a bike involved, right? Does yep. Iron Man have a bike involved? Yep. Yeah, it's triathlon. Yeah. No, Iron no, no, no. Man I, Iron Man. Iron Man's triathlon. Triathlon. Is, I mean, is, yeah, is, the three. Has, triathlon's got nothing on an Iron Man. An Iron Man is 
A Isn't triathlon it? is like it's one Torino. quarter What's of an Ironman. What's a Nutri-Grain Ironman? Iron Man? That's, that's an Ironman. That's a surf life-saving. A the surf life-saving. Hawaiian Ironman Iron Man yep. is a three and a half kilometre swim, yep. 180 kilometre cycle, yep. and then a marathon. Right. Yep. Right. That's what all Iron Men are. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck exactly, son. man. Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, I had the privilege to train with this guy. He trained me for free, like basically sponsored me. Um, and um, man, uh, Justin mentioned that for his, his prep for his second fight was cardio, 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 which I only can assume that in his first fight he felt that cardio was something that he really needed to work on. And I got to the point in, in this two weeks that I was training under this fucking guy that's an Iron Man and keeping up with him. You know, and, and fucking Darren, fu- Darren's a legend. <laughs> and and so, like you know, somehow when the fight came and I fought, I was fucking puffed, man. I was so tired, so like, <laughs> overtrained. Like, no, overtrained. I don't, I don't like think I was overtrained. I, I think it was a combination of two things. It's the training that I did was was fitness, like it was cardio oriented, but not Muay Thai. So it wasn't like I was yeah. kicking pads you or punching. You have to tailor or, it to exactly what right. you're going to be right. doing. Exactly. Yeah. So that's where marathon. some people... <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. some, some people go wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. I could have yeah. swum to Alcatraz, yeah. but uh, put me in a ring and I'm yeah. fucked. So, <laughs> so there was that factor. And another big one is um, is nerves. You know, when, when, at the end of the day, when, you, when, you're walking, when you're walking into the ring, it's very hard to deny you, you're not nervous or you're not... Um, Anxious, mm. and when you're nervous or anxious, your body, everything tightens up. Your lungs, everything just tightens up. Like that. yeah, you use and extra when energy. You th- mm. When you when you're sparring or kicking pads in a gym, you're always exhaling. That's why you always hear this ha ha ha. But when you're in a fight, for some reason, you don't do that. Like unless you're at a top level, like Holly Holmes, she's a, a famous. P- person that does that real loud, you can hear her every yeah. every. Almost strike like she's, she's telegraphing her shots with it a little yeah. bit. It sounds like Martina Hingis, like <coughs> young Serena. Mm. Not to, yeah, not yeah. To so much. That to didn't that, did, that didn't work to a, for too well for the last eighteen championships in boxing. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> holy. <laughs> was, no, I, trust me, it, it, it helps. Um, yeah, my point was when you throw combos that are more than two three punch combos, you're holding your breath. When, as in when you're in a fight mm. situation When you're yeah. not supposed to be doing a, that It's just about excess of CO2 in your system And, it, it, and that builds just, up And then, then once that adrenal- up, Adrenaline would have to be a major factor in that right? 100% that's, yeah. a, that's the yeah. cause yeah. of it Yeah yep. it, it's Adrenaline's just so a fucking strange. crazy it's thing so isn't strange. it Like it's it's something that's really fucking tangible when it, when it you know floods your system or whatever You really know what's up But um but yeah, it's 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 not something you can kind of really manufacture, other than I suppose getting in a fight or you know some sort of horrible accident or something. Maybe like we were discussing before the podcast, like <clears throat> excuse me for anybody who's been in like a car, like any sort of car accident before. There's this like moment that that occurs during when you're still sort of it's happening, but you haven't quite realized it's happened as in past tense. You haven't realized that you've had a car accident yeah. yet. And then it's like, it's just like this. Oh fuck. This stark realization that just comes over you. And, um, yeah, fuck. It's, it's just so weird. It's adrenaline. An intense I'd, feeling. I'd love to <clears throat> talk to some sort of neurochemical biologist or something that, um, that could explain really what adrenaline does, but far away, man. <laughs> Have you heard of like those, those old? <laughs> I don't know if it's just a Hunter S. Thompson thing, but um, but they like talk about like if you actually ingest something from the pineal gland, like in in uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, they chew, they're looking for a pineal gland to chew on that you can actually like get high from it and shit like that. If you chew on somebody else's pi- pineal, a gland. human pineal gland, yeah, so allegedly. <laughs> Man, was this one time at Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> I, chewed, I chewed this guy's pineal up. gland. I had some pineal gland in the doof doof tent. <laughs> so what do we got up next here? We got UFC Fight Night, Gustafsson, no, Uriah Hall's in the No, no. That's, is that uh, Uriah Hall? No, it isn't. Oh. Uh, Derek Lewis? Is that Ooh. on the left? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Razak Al-Hassan. Yeah. Oh, oh she's yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. both got sort of Eastern European names. Oh, undefeated. Um, Abdul. Omeri from Ghana. Pronounce those names. Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. Omari Akhmedov. Akhmedov. The Wolverine. Akhmedov. 
Wow, we sixteen and three. Yeah, Russian Eagle. against the seven and eight. That's a very fun fight. That that's probably well. Kamosi uh, versus Trevor Smith. Kamosi's uh, never in a boring that, uh, fight. On that undercard there too. Uh, Nordine Taleb on the main card. He Nordine. always comes to, comes to throw down. <laughs> I'm a big fan of him. Fucking Nordine. Look, it's not not the best card, but after two eleven in the big pay per view uh, blockbuster, that that's understandable. Taleb's the guy who beat. Oh, it, no, who's he fighting? Not, I got the wrong guy. Taleb. Y- he's, got a, he's got a black. Yeah, it's not not the strongest of Yoel cards, Romero. name wise. But that doesn't always <laughs> mean um, that doesn't always mean the caliber of the card. We could have like. Fucking seven fight of the Exa- night. Yeah, exactly. You can never card, write a card you know? off. Like. Exactly. Um, yeah. Just quickly, does anyone know who you why? got in the main though? What? Who you got in the main? Uh, Gustafsson. It's hard to go past uh, him. Gister- uh, Teixeira got knocked out cold by Rumble last time he fought him. Yeah, those two guys are th- real have even. You got, have you what guys have seen rated? the? Um, Gustafsson's just had a baby. I don't know. If he's distracted. One fights two. I don't know if he's putting in. So is this a number one contender fight then? If it's one fights two, <laughs> it feels like a gatekeeper fight. <laughs> Yeah. Shout out Gustafsson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Glover. That <laughs> is the world we live in now at 205 pounds. Yeah, it's fucking. Do you know they that? are absolutely fucking screaming for another young contender to come out. Like David Branch came over, World Series of Fight champion. He let off the pay per view card there at 211 in a uh, fucking pretty mediocre performance. Did enough to win, but there's just no fresh faces. That's why there's almost appeal for someone like Luke Rockhold to go up and fucking throw his hat in the mm. ring, but. The only problem is there is Daniel Cormier is there at, with the belt and he's not going to fight yeah. his training partner for the belt. So if John got it, he could talk his way into that. I, I would watch John Jones versus Luke Rockhold, mm. but if the winner of this, Gustafsson, there's there's beef there with Jones. Well, n- not essentially beef, but they had a, a hotly contested first fight. Partying, John was partying his fucking balls yeah. off. Yeah. Gustafsson also got starched by Rumble in front of his home, home crowd and, yeah. you know, so I, did, I don't know if the... Both, so did Glover, the, the both, both if, of these if guys they came are, out, yeah. These guys have both felt the wrath of uh, Rumble Johnson, man. Yeah. Remember Glover got that yeah, uppercut that's true. from hell. Like, can't handle his hands. Yeah, they need like a, you know, Francis Ngannou or something mm. to come along for that division. What's he's, the he's go He's like, the... you know, potential star, star rising, eh? Chuck needs to... I can tape him <laughs> up and go. Mate, he could probably go for a title shot yeah, right bite now. Bite down and swing hard. If GSP <laughs> can get walk in and get a title shot at middleweight, then Chuck, puts Chuck his can hand definitely up. jump back in at 205. Chuck's but. talking about coming back. Chuck's talking about having a fight. <laughs> Is that for Chuck? real? Yeah. Um, Is that like... He would, how, how deep to is that rumour? To get him in some sort of like exhibition match type of thing, like there was talk of him fighting um, Matt Hughes, man. I don't know if, yeah, if both of them... Matt Hughes coming back. Oh, yeah. what about... Talk about Matt 40, Hughes. He's 47, the ice man. Ooh, oh, go Chuck. Fuck off. Four he's not Chuck. coming off. He, oh, he, if he comes back, UFC's going no, to shit. He, he shouldn't because he's uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of my favourite <laughs> photos of all time. But uh, a salty record. He went out bro. with three KOs in his last three fights and his legacy's fully intact. He's an out-and-out legend, uh, already Hall of Fame-worthy Chuck Liddell. He's... Legacy's there. I would just wouldn't like to see him come back at this age. No, no, not it's start to be not, de- detrimental. Not, no, if if not, it's never the, the thing same. Is, the thing the is, the thing is, the thing is, the UFC's gotten so popular now by the name, the brand, and McGregor and everything pushing it that the people would want it all the time. So they're just trying to stuff as many cards in together. They need to just go back to like one a month. I reckon it builds it more. And but the the UFC roster is too big for that. You know, that's it's fighters a, it's need a to big fight. Well, then, well, then they I need to start. They need to start getting behind more of their fighters and putting more like um, promotional stuff about <laughs> more people, not just like the big people. They need to approach it like a whole sports right, league, a whole sports league, rather than just like these one or two, three stars that may fight twice a year mm. if they're like, if we're lucky. And that's what people are tuning in for. Like the majority of people are tuning in for that. It's good to watch fights like. Like we were saying before, you can never write off a card. You look at the card, you don't know, you know, 80% of the names, but you, you watch that card and you watch some good martial arts yeah. and some good fights. So well, They sell so much out of the fucking promotion now. Yeah. And, I, and I'll 100% put my hand up and then I fucking love the promos, man. I eat that shit up. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's like when they've got good drama to a storyline, as much as, you know... So, like a lot of people fucking hate the WWE and shit like that. It, yeah. bo- it borrows entertainment elements from that and puts it into a sport. Definitely. And the hype behind it and stuff like that. Like you're not going to get a bigger selling, 
you know, opportunity for advertisers and all sorts of shit as the the lead in to McGregor Mayweather, you know, that that like arguably will be a fucking pretty boring fight, like a pretty shitty fight that that doesn't amount like a boxing oh, match man, where I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen there, man. I can't believe it's actually like almost fucking really going to really fucking I don't happen. know. I, 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 Nine, I was, I was, massively, I was Mayweather, massively I was massively underwhelmed by Mayweather Manny Pacquiao and um and but that's two that's and this completely is, this different. Is, that's two boxers doing what boxers do. You yeah. throw someone who's not never had a boxing fight in their life, regardless if he's a UFC champion, he's had he's amateur, gonna lots do, of amateur fights. He's gonna do fight. things a whole lot different to what boxers do. Mm. And I wanna see what that whether that how that goes down. <laughs> so do I. Whether it's a flop or whether it's like a successful, I wanna see what happens. Absolutely. Because, because of the fucking spec like spectacle of it. The spectacle of it is one hundred percent like fucking I reckon the promo will almost dwarf the fight. Is, is what I'm calling. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. But, that's um, a good point. Yeah, but um, but absolutely, sign me up, son. I'm I'm a hundred percent ready to go. We just need one signature to go. Really, yeah. Those guys that's, don't that's care what fucking, it, uh, That's like ninety percent of it. Ninety nine percent of it. I don't think either fighter is particularly concerned what it looks like. They're caring about the. Nine figures that's going to get paid into their fucking bank accounts yeah. at the end of this thing. <laughs> by the time, by the time, McGregor gets his cut and gets all the endorsements out of the fight, all the promo, he's got his finger in so many pies. That dude these days with all of his like cars, watches, you name it, like Emoji really, really, the really, team, yeah, yeah. really starting to put his own sort of empire together. Yeah. The Mac life. That's it. It's going to be. Hard for him to come back to something Mac as Life's hard as MMA team, for though, really. six to seven million. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's all the and what's going to happen? So intriguing. After that, you reckon he? Do you reckon he hangs him up? See, that's, I reckon that's he could. Good, man. He could. I reckon he. I reckon he well why not? I reckon he. I reckon he comes Save back and has one more ma- like massive like blow out the wall fight, fight in the UFC with some crazy yeah. star. He demands how much he wants. Sort of yeah. thing. like you'll give me thirty five. He fights it. <laughs> he fights Cyborg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does the first like male female crossover, Gets and I'm up. taking the belt from the women. <laughs> Gets lit. Like, I'm coming <laughs> for all these belts. <laughs> Cyborg just Gets lights him up. Cyborg Gets lays lit. him out. How fucking incredible would that be? You know, twenty to like 2076, we might be seeing some shit like that. You never, you never know the way we're sort of progressing. Who would have thought we'd be sitting here like, you know. Arguing for on, on on the last episode of the podcast, arguing for how we reckon, you know, kicks kicks to a downed opponent's head like soccer ball kicks and shit should be allowed. Like, would you endorse? Uh, you know, the we've talked about it in the last two podcasts, but get your take as guys who've been there and done it with that whole like downed opponent thing that's fucked two fights now. I'm happy to just see him near him in the head. I don't mind. Uh, if you're, if you're, you reckon? I reckon. If you're training martial arts, you should know self-defense. You should know how to defend yourself at all times. Part of being, and that's the appeal of an MMA fight, is there's no rules, air quotes. There's obviously got to be some rules, but it's the most like real thing you can get to an actual fight. So that's how I watch it, and that's how I, like my perspective is you, you're watching two people try and you know go to war. And so... If one person's standing on the on on the cage in a vulnerable position and they're trying to play this game where they put their hands on the ground and pu- pull it up, that's not self defense in my eyes because it's you're in a vulnerable position. You need to you need to make a decision to get out of that. Otherwise, yes, that's what's going to happen in a real fight, and that's why we watch MMA as opposed to like boxing or kickboxing, right? Because there is very a limited amount of rules, and I think. If we establish, yes, there. If you, are on a, if you're a downed opponent, the ref's there. Like you can, you know, if you show the back of your head to a, to someone, the ref should stop it immediately. That's how it's supposed to go. The ref is supposed to there to look after both people. As soon as a person, the back of their head, don't even let the kick. Just st- and that's hard. You can't say that's the rule because, like those two guys said in that fight with Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier, you're in the moment. Your adrenaline is going through the roof. There are things that you can control and there are things that you, you know, like depending on how well you versed you are in that adrenaline. But it should be, if you're down, you're not protecting yourself, the fight's over. That's it. Like, that's, I think soccer kicks should be allowed. Like, I'm down. Because no no I'm down. gloves. 
Well, the thing about the gloves is it's not the gloves, it's the wraps. Because if you've ever had your hand wrapped, your wrist is solid as fuck. You can deliver so much power through that because that last week, that last joint between your knuckles and where the power is coming from is solid. Mm. If people, if, it, if people were to wear, to if, if people were finger. bare knuckle, I guarantee you there'll be less knockouts from hands. Mm. Because have you ever tried and punch someone with no no wraps on? You can't hit them very hard without breaking something in your hand. Your hands are pretty soft. Like and if you punch someone's skull. That fucking hurts. I'm all about the body shots, man. Yeah. <laughs> you would see a whole lot more of that sort of stuff. I'm just joking, fam. I've never... <laughs> <laughs> and a whole I haven't lot... fought since the sixth yeah. grade. And a whole... And a whole <laughs> you would see like... Still three and a... <laughs> <laughs> Undefeated record. Yeah. Undefeated Still got my record. lunch money. Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I'm... Uh, I'm kind of on the fence about it all. Um... I'm not a fan of the whole Joe Rogan pitching fighting on a tennis court with no gloves and <laughs> no rules basically. Ski boots. Um it just it it <laughs> it it makes it almost too too much of like you know a, a, a real a real scenario almost too much though yeah. if you know Where if are you ever going to have like, that much room? Have you like, ever seen that fight. um and, that and not only that it th- I like the fact there's a cage. Mm. I, I, I think that is it. One, it encourages people to, uh, it encourages you to fight, right? Because yeah. there would be, I know for sure there would be dickheads that, you know, run around and run until they get their breath back. Mm-hmm. That's what will happen. I don't mind the running around in the octagon. That doesn't bother me at all. Still I understand find, it's yeah. called resetting yourself. People boo about it all the time, but they don't understand they're not in that situation. Yeah, those people in the ring. That boo have never fucking that's, trained. I fucking hate booers. We'll get onto that another time. Um, They're fucking hugging on the ground, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fucking get up. Yeah. As, Stop pumping him. Stand him up, right? As for the knee rule thing, they I think they should get rid of that completely. I'm um, with Justin on that. Um, soccer kicks, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the soccer t- kick to the head. Um, and it's stomping. really it's really head stomping. it's really down to one reason is that us as spectators that watch it is like, oh, that's awesome, but it's always at the back of your head. And when you get in a street fight, you start fucking kicking people and Scott, you know, soccer kicking them in the head. Mm. Uh, it that's what it, that's the vibe it gives me. Oh, it, yeah. yeah, it just does doesn't give me a professional. No, uh, look, <laughs> no. I, I can't no, expect. I understand it look, that. It looks. It yeah, just looks fucking it. dirty. If well, that even makes sense. even like, outside of you know professional uh, organized sport. There, there's such a thing as like a fair fight. Yeah, you know? yeah So it's absolutely. like you don't you don't yeah. kick somebody in the balls if they're it's knocked out. You don't keep kicking them in the head. But yeah. you're right with this like you know internet generation now, man. I've seen some videos. Yeah, I've seen some <laughs> fucking some Ooh, yeah. Harlem streets stay flooded in white powder type videos. Yeah, you know, you like kicked but, him in the face. <laughs> I don't know what it is um, about about the person kicking in the head. I think it's a type of some type of fear, or like it's do or die in that situation. But as a spectator, I feel like for some reason people always go, "Oh, you know," like they'll be cheering that guy on until he knocks him down. Then when he starts kicking, soccer kicking him in the head mm. when he's already half unconscious, it just looks <coughs> that doesn't di- look that's, professional. That's, it's that's sadistic, kind of, yeah. That's different. I don't agree with like. <laughs> like the soccer, yeah. once a person's out and booting the shit out of their head, that's exactly. Not, that's and I don't what, think there's anybody. I don't even that's mean out. What, that's I not what they, I meant they at don't, all. I know. I, I know that's not what you meant. But they don't even have to be out conscious. I just mean comp- like dazed hands like this, and you just get fucking yeah. booted reckon, in the head. I reckon you. It's just uh, something you're allowed to do it once. Would yeah. be the rule that I would do. So, but that's too hard to enforce. That's too hard to police. Yeah, it's too hard to enforce. Then you'd have to give a timer. The thing about making rules, you have to be right there for the stoppage for the ref. Yeah, Be real one, one, like one real Mazzagati, like real late. There's a, a th- conversion on th- th- somebody's head. Probably the third or fourth <laughs> biggest MMA organization at the moment is One FC out of Asia, Southeast Asia, and they allow soccer, soccer yeah, kicks still. Soccer kicks. Um, I, I've seen it live. Do they fight in a cage? Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's much larger too. The, and the, the one good thing about One FC is they're doing hydration tests, and they've been doing it for uh, ages. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you've got so to be you can't within cut a certain, weight. You've got to be within a certain um, uh, hydration level thirty mm-hmm. days out from your fight. Thirty and days, they, and then Shit. they hydrate you, like they measure you again, like right. the, the day of your fight. That's good. And That's that good. that comes uh, that comes after one of their fighters. I think it was a Korean a Korean fighter um, died from dehydration. Right. Uh, I forget his name, unfortunately. But um, I watched a video. Since since he died, 
uh, it was, you know, it made MMA world news. And the guys at, at 1FC, like Rich Flank, Franklin and them, they just said, we've got we to gotta figure something out. And, it, you know, it's, it's so strange that we've got to wait till someone dies. And it, I know, it, it's just the way it happens with, it, with everything, you know, like, yeah. it, for example, soccer kicks. Maybe someone might die of a soccer kick soon. They're going to have to ban that. You know, it's just so weird that it has to wait till someone dies until they take action. But I really think it's a big step forward. And UFC and Bellator need to ha- take a hard look at themselves and, and, and a hard look at what, what 1FC are doing because it's still really entertain- entertaining. It's just, it's, it's so debatable. Um, this this whole weight cutting, whether it should be even exist or not, and it, it came from it's an wrestling, expo- didn't it? Yeah, I think it's it a did. Wrestling yeah, thing. it's an expo. It, it's in some people call it cheating. I don't call it cheating, but I call it taking advantage w- like too much, you know. And it, for unhe- for an unhealthy reason, fighting's already the most dangerous sport you can possibly fucking do. On top of that, you want to dehydrate yourself, you know, four times, five times, six times a, a year. Yeah. Fuck, man! Like it's already. The short one of the shortest career professional sporting careers that you can have, and so they say the real issue with it is um, that somehow, like, sort of your hydration sort of lubricates your brain and provides an extra layer of padding. So, if you are uh, dehydrating yourself, then you have basically like a dry brain that's more susceptible to trauma, is, is my understanding, as well as all know. the damage that it does on your liver and everything like that. I mean, mm. yeah, your kidneys cop a beating, kidneys, sorry, yeah. Have you ever seen that Russian hip fighting on the um, hip? On the internet, I think it's hip H I P. If you, um, I might be like able a to sambo thing. Find it. Is it's it, like a. Uh, it's that, like team fights. Oh, yep, yep. Oh. Seen it. Man, <laughs> it's, uh, it's like rushes. thirty or forty on forty. Yeah, it's like thirty on thirty. Have you seen the gym? It'd like be the like three on four. Or, oh, that one. There's another one of like rival mm. football clans <laughs> in Russia. Man, what don't they do in Russia? <laughs> oh man, they fucking ruthless. Ruthless Russians. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an epic production. So, for those listening, we're just watching the uh, crazy Russian MMA fights hip show promo, promo four. four. It's a well put together piece. It's team oh, fighting, so they're, like, they're fighting on. <laughs> what is this, man? They're fighting on obstacles and shit. The like obstacles. Take down off the oh, <laughs> Dude oh, Fuck off <laughs> oh, Fuck bro That's a way oh. to get some fucking injuries for sure So for, That's a way so to break for anybody, neck. Um, anybody listening to this They've basically got like these sort of two It's a fucking obstacle course Two meter big like square um, Soft padded gladiator style I guess Structures On a mat and they're sort of just like a free for all. Guys are getting sort of tackled off the top of these things. Oh Ooh. man, that's oh. fucking intense! Oh, <laughs> like sort of getting gang bash. You, yeah. Really fuck. YouTube crazy, crazy Russian MMA fights hip show promo four. Only four thousand views on this bitch, man. This is some underground <laughs> shit. Yeah. Breaking, oh. <laughs> breaking it. Did you <laughs> see that hit, man? This Did you see illegal. that? Oh god, that's bad. A crime just Watch occurred. Watch this shot. Did you see that, man? I didn't a dog see shot. It. I missed it. Watch this. What's this guy hit? standing we're talking, here? We're talking about hitting someone Come while they're down. It was the <laughs> yeah, talk about hitting somebody while they're down. Watch this next bit. Boom. Ooh. Just king hit. <laughs> that's, see, that's what happens. The back of the head. The back of the head, man, is <laughs> so dangerous. Readjusting his glove it just yeah. gets clobbered. Dink. <laughs> the one you don't see is get the one that gets you. That's correct. Out. Put your matchmaking hat on, boys. I uh, want to throw a couple of uh, prominent mixed martial arts names at you and uh, I want you to tell me who they should fight next and why. Matt Brown. For me, I'll, I'll tell you mine while you have a thing. Mike Perry. I think Platinum Mike Perry. Have you seen any of his shit recently? Yeah. 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 Full, like, Jersey, Jersey boy, like Long Island I product. That'd be a good fight. Uh, <laughs> you Matt Brown's like back down to 14. He lost a couple of fights. He's back down to 14. Perry's right there as well. Yeah. Perry comes to bang, man. He's not looking to uh, to come here that's and just good, coast his a way through. It'd be a good man. fight. He's It'd looking to come fight. and bang and knock people out. He was the one who knocked out uh, Nate Marquardt with that elbow. Uh, okay. And, uh, man, that was oh, a brutal. My man, you hear him on the MMA hour afterwards and stuff. He's like, I'm not here to get aspirations of hurting people, but just part for the course. Like, oh. like, and you're like, <laughs> I oh, love to hate shit, him, mate. Dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but the thing brash is, as fuck, dude. <laughs> but so unintentionally, it's just a guy who would be. You'd see him at a bar and be like, oh, and he so, and he admits it himself. You'd just be like, that dude's a fucking jerk. <laughs> you know what I mean? He even yeah, says that. Yeah. Oh. yeah. 
Give us the okay. white first. Yep. Uh, where are we going next? Um, I don't know, man. I have to agree with you. Uh, I don't know. I like that fight as well, and yeah. you've just put that idea in my mm. head. Uh, <laughs> I'd argue with that. Yeah. Dominic Cruz. Uh, he, Looks like TJ is going to potentially go down. So you take Demetrius him Johnson, number two. Really? Yeah. Really? You yep. think they get that done? No, but that's no. what I want to see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh man, I want to uh, see him fight someone, but I just want to see him fight when he's healthy. Yep. So whether he fight, he could fight any of those like TJ. Um, I want to see him uh, fight Garbrandt again. Yep. Mm. Um, uh, because I think a yep. lot of people. Just want to throw Dom into the crowd of like, oh, he's past his prime now because some young guy's beaten him. But Dom's such a cream an of in, some young guy. Yeah, cream of some young guy. <laughs> Dom Dom is um, someone who's like so uh, smart. He's like such a, an analytical guy. It <laughs> what are you doing? It's D E M. I'm off it. Danny, Danny's Danny spelling on the last United. Yeah, 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 I've yeah. got a writing degree. <laughs> got, I was just about to say, didn't you go to fucking uni for this shit? <laughs> Dometrius. Yeah, sorry, man. You, Dom Cruz? Um, I really think he can beat any of those guys, like, given, given another shot at him, because he's such a, a technical fighter that he, he will watch that fight. Mm. A, thousand times over and then like pick it apart and then see where he can change and see where he can yeah. I've got to see, I love I've watching got to... guys like that like is Demetrius Duck and TJ though it seems that way a little bit I've got a mad one for Dominic Cruz I want Frankie Edgar to wait to see who wins that uh, nah, June Frankie's, 3 fight Frankie's if, too big for if, him if Jose Aldo wins that fight it's hard to give Frankie his third shot yeah it, it really really difficult spot if that happens for Frankie I'd like to see him go down and fight Dominic Cruz. Can Frankie make 135? Yes. He has before, he can, eh? Oh, he hasn't before, he hasn't, but no. he's always said that he could. Like he, I don't, man. He if, weighed in at 55 having a fucking he's the champ at, steak he sandwich. He was the champ at 55, right? He was if, the yeah. champ. He if, beat Benson twice at 55. Mate, if Frankie, if Frankie fights Demetrius Johnson, that is no, no, too I'm much to, uh, for... Dom Cruz. Uh, Dom yeah, Cruz. Yeah, mate, Dom, sorry. Dom, I meant to Dom say Cruz. Dom Cruz. <laughs> if, if Frankie Edgar fights Dom Cruz, he's too big for him. I don't think Dom hasn't... Because... Yeah, I would love to see that fight. It would be a fucking great, uh, a great fight. Definitely, give me uh, and then give your title shot to Frankie, like while they wait. Because yeah. Cody Garbrandt has seemed to have fucked his back, and that's where the talk of TJ Dillashaw fighting Might Demetrius nice. Johnson. Yeah, but on that it seems like Demetrius don't want none of that. He just wants that but title, I, title I, defense I, record. I kind of understand it. Yeah, like I understand it. Uh, unl- the only way he can't dodge it is if uh, TJ goes down. Mm. It's the only way you can't do, you can like. There's no way. If I, if I was in his position, doing. if I was in DJ's position, I'm fucking one off beating the greatest that's, uh, that's title defenses record, yeah. ever. You know, a tough fight like that only adds credibility to no, it. No, I understand. I understand that. But, but you why know, not he's, ma- why not make that the one after? Because like, I think you know. he's you know like he's copped a lot of flack for not being yeah. a draw. You know, and and I think he would feel a lot of that criticism. He w- he would have to come across a lot of that criticism. So it's not that you you know you need to pander to your audience and stuff like that and 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 do whatever the mass consensus says, but. Who was the bloke he In fought way, last time? Guy. Like uh, Wilson Hayes. Yeah, yeah. I, right. Like n- n- not a name that I had ever heard before. Like being a mainstream sort of fan, but yeah, I don't know. I think it'd it'd I'd fucking be keen as shit to mm. see that one. That's Whereas if it was him versus some no name again, meh, I might not buy that card. That's what know? a lot of people bought into McGregor. Man, he fought anyone. That you put in front of him, yeah. Opponent switch, Chad Mendes, slip him in. Yeah, I'll take him. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna knock him out. And yeah, he fucking I'm fighting on that, on that there. night. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So he took anyone, and that's where people, as fans, admire that in people. And you see, mm-hmm. we've got the perfect scenario to set up to really make your name explode. You could potentially beat a hundred former 135 pound champion, and you're declining. To the chance to do that Like yeah. I think that If he beats him there Goat. That explodes him to Goat like, like, If he beats him No fuck no Not for me man Not when you look at the calibre of opponents That he's beat in his run Compared to someone like uh, John Jones Silver. For me man shut, shut the fuck up I think, I think Jones <laughs> uh, The run that he did in his early 20s Against a list of out and out Hall of Famers yeah. And what he did to them I can't argue with fucking, that yeah. It is so good man he look, he's already, beat, already beaten Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier hasn't lost since then. Like, yeah. DC's and successful at heavyweight, that. and she's still got him. Like, 
That's as, the thing. Uh, ill-disciplined and stuff as he is, uh, for me, uh, he's... The baddest man on the planet. He's on the top of the podium, on he's, the, like, the yeah. Mount Rushmore sort yeah. of thing. That's it. I think it's all about the people that you're beating. And, and yeah, John Jones beat literally everyone. Like, most of the people he beat are retired now. <laughs> Who would be your Mount Rushmore of just fighting for, like, the... Oh, I hate that fucking history. Mount Rushmore. The Mount Rushmore. Who's is on it, the Mount Rushmore? Is it three? Brandon Schaub. Is it, is it oh. three or four? Four. It's 120 four. for Brandon. Mm-hmm. So you'd have you'd have Ali for sure. No, nah, not on mine. No? Nah? No. Nah. I'm wearing his T-shirt right now. But Hicks and Gracie. Not, you so you're, it, you're just going your faves? Is it an MMA one? Yeah. I, th- I think across all promotions, if there's an MMA one specifically, like the boxing one, I'd have to think like too deep. Sugar Ray Leonard or... I'm something. talking about like the hot, the most highest profile fighters you can think of. So Ali, Tyson, who else? Icons that transcended the actual sport and went Mayweather. To, yeah. Royce, Royce Gracie. Royce Gracie, maybe. Would more people know Steven Ronda Seagal. Rousey or John Jones than Royce Gracie, would you argue? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, dude. Easily, yeah. man. That's Easily depressing. through mainstream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not, not that's saying, reality, son. Not saying it's right, but it's how it is. Uh, that's, the, that's the crowd you're catering to when you sell these shows too. Is like you, you, can't, right. you can't, you're not catering to the, hard, yeah. to the hardcore guys that are into, like, no, they, yeah. Uh, Michael Bisping? Uh, Yoel Romero. I want to see him fight Yoel Romero. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You just have to feed him to him, eh? Like you do. It's Yoel's but you know waiting what? for his You know what? I think fucking Michael beats him, eh? Really? I oh. think, honestly, oh. honestly think, you know what? I think there's so much that Yoel is so confident that he's going to do a Luke Rockhold. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you're saying. I can see your because, angle. Because Bisping is just like that grinder that never yeah. stops. Man, you watch that fucking Anderson Silver fight in Manchester. When he knees him and knocks him out mm. at the end of the third round and then fucking Bisman comes back with, to win that <laughs> fight. At the end of the fight, he's got like one eye is completely mm. closed. The other eye he can't see out of and he's got fucking like a cheek that's the size of a watermelon. He can't goes, fuck with If it Bisping, goes five yeah. rounds, it's Bisping's. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean? It seems that that's way to me. That's the thing. It's five rounds and Yola mm. has been known to fucking oh. sit on the stool for a bit Dude. and fucking throw some ice on him for a bit. And That's right. Yeah. Shady character. Yeah. That he, uh, he copped quite a lot of shit for that age. He's yeah. Yeah. Not for gay Jesus. Don't forget. Don't I'm for gay, gay Jesus. Jesus. Dude, did you see his his last video that went viral? No. Oh, dude, fuck Get him. that up. Get that up. <laughs> that's, <laughs> in, that's intense. What's it, what is it? What, what you uh, just type in Yol Romero message to oh you Ramero. Danny, <laughs> Danny's done, he's doing it on purpose. Yeah. Yol Ramero. Is this? He's just joking, right? <laughs> it's R O M E R O. Type in uh, message for Michael Bisping. <laughs> dude, how high are you? <laughs> Not at all, my son. Uh, <laughs> nah, in the ch- in the ch- in the. Ch- uh, why don't you do the showing results for the corrected spelling? Yeah. yeah, that might help us go down. Go down, yeah. This uh, you saw the one. Yeah, the boys. Yeah, the no, boys. not that Seven one. Seven seconds. Not that one. No. no. Michael Bisping. No. No. Uh, man, that's depressing. It's it's him in like Why don't you Google it's him it. training Google and he's it just like, I have a message for you, Michael Bisping. Just write in uh, Yoel Mar- Yeah, yeah. Joel. Man, this is intense. And and you watch this and <laughs> Was you're it like, Joel? You watch this and you're just like, Oh my god, Michael Bisping is going to die. Yeah, pretty much. He's walking in there with a fucking cyborg. Is this this? Nah. Was it to Bisping? Anyway, anyway. No, no, no. Just, just put in uh, Yoel, Mare- uh, Yoel Romero. Latest training video. No, no, no. And then just press news. No, no, no. Yeah, and then... The tab. The tab news. <laughs> It'll come up. It'll come yeah, up. Yeah, we're good. Quality listening there, ladies. There, there, <laughs> there, there it is there. There it is there. <laughs> that bottom left... Um, sorry. Oh, that yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, that okay. was the one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> None of the listeners are going to be able to see this or hear this anyway. So, oh, no, they've turned this off. I hope you're still listening, guys. <laughs> we do apologize. Um, MMAmania.com have the source if you want to watch it. It's basically, Yoel Mar- Romero uh, in training. Um, Look at the size of this motherfucker. Mate, he's, man. he's 
39 year old man. Legit. He's 39. He's straight out of a fucking and video he game. he still looks like that. Look at him. Look at him. This is at the end, man. Do you honestly reckon he's this not on it? He's completely natural? Down. Do you honestly think he's completely natural? It's just debatable. He's a big Cuban fucking muscle no. freak, man. I don't think oh, he yeah. is, eh? No, I'm not buying it. But in saying that, he's been through Olympic testing. He's yeah. been competing in Olympic games, everything. But just... I think he could be He's that obviously a bit of a genetic freak. freak of you know, nature. you get your Hector Lombards and shit like that. He proved his was assisted, though. Like, he was on the shit. Yeah, Hector popped. Yeah, I mean, to a certain extent, you can't, you can't ever just attribute fucking all of the hard work and yeah, shit like nah, that. That I'm somebody, not, I'm not somebody saying that. Somebody <laughs> I'm not <laughs> saying Fucking I'm not useless saying cheat. I'm not saying that Dude, man, look at, at all. Look at, look at him, man. <laughs> Perpetual motion, He's just man. He's ba- bouncing around just... Shouting at the camera. Imagine that. Callum Bisping is like six. He's like sixteen, he's, seventeen years he old now. He'd impersonating. He would have full on fucking access to the internet. Him being able to see this dude. Bisping's call, kids. Yeah, being able to like Callum oh. Bisping being seventeen years old, <laughs> being able to go onto his Twitter and see this dude calling out his old man. Like yeah. that must be fucking insane to mm. be uh, mm. the teenage child of like a professional fighter where you're fully Dad's understand gonna go what's fight going this on. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Dad's yeah. fighting fucking Henderson. Same with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Same with uh, the... He fucked him up. <laughs> he <laughs> fucked Dad up and Dad still won. <laughs> oh, fuck, yeah. yeah, Anderson Silva's kids too. Same deal. That's it. Fucking gnarly shit. Got anyone else on your list? Jorge Masvidal. I th- I, he won a lot of respect for me out of uh, even taking that L. That was his ins- stock went insane, up. Insane, man. It that was. was insane. Did you? Did anyone hear him? Uh, hear Maya say that he's the best Brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, 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 player ever, yeah. he's ever fought in in the, in the ring in, in, in MMA, MMA? Yeah, I did hear that. That's Cause he fuck, hung with him, that, man. Yeah, but yeah, but that just brushed over everyone. Like, do you know yeah. what he just said, man? Yeah. This is a fucking a master. The, yeah, the, the master just said that, and it's true, man. Because he got it. He got him in this position that he's finished his last Everyone. four fucking opponents Everyone. in, in the matter of thirty seconds, and he did it for fucking three, four, three rounds. He just mm. made but the his thing is, wear him but like the, a backpack. the thing like, is, like, oh. I mean, as good as Damian Meyer is, he's. One Everyone eventually. knows what he's going to do. So it's not... I mean, it's, it's hard to game plan for because it's hard to fucking have that amount of skill in less yeah. than you know, eight weeks. But you can do things to to mitigate as much like what he's doing if you have the, the right, you know, group of people around you and you can resource. Like if you know someone's just going out there, if you're fighting Mike Tyson, you know he's not going to try and take you down. You know he's going to just try and like walk forward and, and throw fists at you. Mm. It's the same thing for for Damian Meyer. It's like if he's gonna, he, you know, he's not gonna try and stand there and, and fucking kick you in the head. So you 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 yeah. can drop your guard a little bit on that on that Ho- side of things. Jorge Masvidal versus Thompson. That's what I had. I had that written down. Wonder Boy, Wonder Boy for sure. I think Masvidal. That'd versus be a sick Wonderboy fight because be he sick. takes it to Wonder Boy. Masvidal would get after him. Absolutely, there's mm. no uh, defense there. That could main event. I'd be worthy of seeing them over five rounds. It, mm. it, it really would. What's um? I can see Khabib on your list there. Yeah, Spoiler had, uh, alert. What had, about uh? Do with Khabib. I had Khabib. It was my uh, was the last one on that list. What do you do with Khabib? Ferguson. Yeah, they got to wait to for it. Do you make Tony wait? Do you make Tony wait? Who's he gonna fight? Old mate. He's not he, fighting McGregor he anytime soon. He, he just called out um. Fuck. Who did Ferguson call out? Aloe Quinta was t- yes, calling Ferguson's that name out. They they had some oh, beef. Oh, no. yeah. Raging Al's ranked nowhere. Tony does not need to take no, that No, 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 that's, that's shit. Just, Raging that, Al's got that, this new shtick on Twitter where he's out there clowning around right, and mouthing off. He's got right. the... You know what's weird? Big attention grab Yeah, but that, thing. F- that fight that he just won, everyone's like, yeah, I love Against Quinto. Diego. And now he's just fucking killed himself with all this media shit he's mm. doing. Everyone's... It totally backfired on him. True. His performance that he put in that night... It won everyone over in the crowd, mm. won ever, er, all the viewers, and then he went on social media the last fucking three, four weeks, and everyone's oh. like, who's this dick? Yeah, Fuck he, him off. He's, he's still trained with Ray Longo and shit? Yeah, he's still yeah. that Long Island. Yeah, Long Island strong. Yeah. Are you booing me? <laughs> you gonna boo me? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck me? Fuck you. Yeah. That's right. What do you reckon's Funny the worst shit. ever post fight? Have to be one of y'all's, I reckon. <laughs> Girls <laughs> had a couple of howlers. Oh, let me um, try and think of. Oh, oh, Amanda Nunes. <laughs> Amanda Nunes. I was gonna yeah, say, yeah. Was gonna say her that. eight minute speech. We just shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. We get it. You love your girlfriend. We get it. Yeah. yeah. Let's wrap it. Yeah. That one. Like that one, one was like uh, just. Uh, it was like. You put the music on. Just sh- shut up. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, she's bad. Fuck, no, there's daylight second now with her. We thought that with fucking Rhonda for a while and mm. Michelle fucking lit her up, man. I reckon uh, this Shevchenko is a... Is a Shevchenko? Yeah. That's Valentina Shevchenko. Her too, yeah. She's... Uh, she's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shevchenko, man. Shevchenko, I'm, I'm worried about her size. That's the only thing I'm worried mm. about. She's a lot smaller than Amanda. Um, but, gee, she, she's stuck in... She's she, not only her. stuck in there, she beat Holly Holm. Shevchenko has already beaten her. No? That's right. In the third round. Ra- no, she didn't beat no, her. No, it was, it was no, it was a very no, close no. fight with Amanda. She was beating her in the third round. That's what happened is oh, they yeah. fought and Amanda won the first two rounds. In the third round, she gassed, she, she gassed and Valentina put the fucking That's pedal right. down and beat the shit out of her in the last round. question is, five rounds, mm. who's going to win? Another 10 minutes. If, if Nunes doesn't knock her out in the first couple. Being in 10 minutes, I feel like could do 10, 20, 30 minutes more. Martial arts obsessed uh, boys here for sure. I'll sit here all night. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> tummy's rumbling. Tummy's rumbling. You hungry, big dog? I'm getting there. <laughs> big dog. Whole thirty, man. I need get need to get that eats in. Yeah. So tell us about this whole thirty you've been doing. What's what's the the basis of this diet? Essentially, to put it simply, just cut out all cut out all the shit. Pretty much. No no processed foods. No processed sugars. No sugars. No. No dairy, no breads, grains or anything for 30 days. And it's like a cleanse, a weight loss, like a uh, uh, ketogenic type thing? I think so, yeah. Like it does. It's not sort of intentionally targeted like at some mad like weight loss thing, but it's just eat, it just seems to be eating a hell of a lot better where we're just eating all... Uh, Low carbs? Yeah, meat and... I don't even know the sort of science of carbohydrates and stuff. Right. Like that it's just... A, the best thing about those sort of things is like as soon as you become conscious about what you're eating, you start to like take note. Oh, fuck. I usually we'd have this at this time of day. If you're like doing something for 30 days, you're like, I'm not going to have any of that. So you start to realise like how bad you have been doing it. And just whether you... Whether that actual what you're eating changes your diet like physi- physiologically... It's just a mental thing of like being conscious about what you eat, and then you start to like become aware of like different things, and have and then start to become like create better habits and things like that. So I think it's yeah, good. It's crazy how far like away from real food we've gotten in like a relatively short space of time. You know, like with processed food, mass production, and shit yeah. like that. Like products, like food products, where you go to the the grocery store and it's just it's like packaged, you know, nicely, packaged. Yeah, it's, bright it's colors. like yeah, in in a in a fluoro box with fucking so cartoon fucking, characters yeah. on it and shit and you're like you think about what psychological ploys what food actually in. is to a human being like yeah. if you want to go back to tribal days and stuff like that we are animals you know we are an, a biological organism like eating eating plants and and other other animals mm. eating the flesh of other animals just living like a viking man oh man i watched um this movie on netflix under australian film if um if anybody's keen for a bit of a history lesson um Van Diemen's Land is the name of Tasmania before it became Tasmania and it was a penile colony um, back in the early 18th century and um, there was a story of these like uh, like a group of convicts that basically escaped from their captain or whatever and um, like went on this basically like march to their death pretty much fucking to try and get to Hobart through like just treacherous fucking Australian bush like freezing cold and um, gradually like cannibalised each other and shit till there was like only only one remaining survivor and um, they do like a dramatisation of it and this dude's like fucking there you know they've just been hiking through the Tasmanian jungle for like so long and they're fucking carrying around a body part with like you know the German bloke in it and shit they're carrying around a bag of body parts with the German bloke in it and shit why they couldn't find anything else yeah, they're just like the whole time they're like, there's fucking nothing out here. like. And you think about it and you're like, winter. if you were just in your long johns and you'd been thrust out into the fucking nothing. Australian bush, yeah. good luck hunting, man. Exactly, yeah. Fucking exactly. like it, it takes it takes a Pe- while to develop Pe- fucking the ability to make yeah. spears and boomerangs and Pe- shit. Be like, oh, they- I just live off the land. Fuck off you would. Not yeah. after you've good been luck. fucking used to good living. Good luck. Yeah. Punch a kangaroo in the fucking head, man. <laughs> <laughs> my feed's right there. My mentality, That's yeah. It, nah, I'll survive. We're man. not built for that anymore, man. We, nah. go, we go camping for three days. Some I can't people, wait to get man. back into my bed, man. Some people, man. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it, what's crazy is, you know, like the way that the indigenous were able to live here for fucking thousands of years yeah. and, and not sort of make any, any dent on the land per se, but survive for that like amount of time through primitive weapons and shit yeah. like that. The boomerang. How crazy is the fucking boomerang when you think about it? Yeah. They would have killed so many birds Dude, and shit. Dude, have you seen the fucking man. iPhone? Buy the, sh- buy the Chanel, <laughs> you buy the Chanel boomerang? <laughs> Fuck Chanel boomerang. Yeah, there's some controversy at some fashion week. Like really? Chanel released this boomerang out here. We were selling them for... 1800 at this convention. What was it made out of? Wood, Diamonds. Black wood. Just had a Chanel <laughs> banner on it, man. But it's a what? polished finish. Yeah. Sure. It's disgusting. Well, I mean, it's like an outrage. Yeah, no, I know. It's oh, a bit, it, was, it, was, it was too far. I didn't like it. I thought nose. it was in bad taste from Chanel, but they got a pretty big legal team, so I don't want to Some like, go too hard at them. Got too much money. <laughs> yeah. So that, that would get somebody's dick hard, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, like, oh, I see I my that. Chanel boomerang? <laughs> <laughs> there would be people out there. Where's my w- Where's my Chanel Woomera? While I'm at it, man. <laughs> there's that end, and then there's people cannibalizing each other. We've That's got it. like a pretty, pretty, pretty varied broad. spectrum across the <laughs> across the human race. Respect, respect. But uh, yeah, we'll leave you there with that as our final note. Wait, wait, wait. I want I want to ask Pricey. Would I haven't watched any of the lead up to the Origin? Yep. What's the What's the go this year? I said uh, on the potty on Friday. Uh, New South Wales 2-1 and I've seen the teams being named and I still think that will be the case. The team looks pretty good for New South Wales, I've got to say. It's one, one of the best ones good bench. that you've had in a few years. Good All bench, right. but Queensland's still got those good players in key positions. So and two, ga- two games at Suncorp as yeah. well. All right, two up here, but yeah, game one, absolutely crucial for the Blues campaign. Definitely. It's uh, essential to get the first win up here. You do not want to be coming up here at, as a decider coming to Suncorp. In Thurston's last state of origin ever. Oh, so yeah. you're just not going to get the fucking nod. win. Should yeah. we do a um, a fight companion? Uh... Origin <laughs> companion. It wouldn't be the worst thing, actually. It'd be something different. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to watch the game properly at all, no, though, I don't reckon. Because no, you wouldn't really be talking. I'll get balls deep. In there, so. <laughs> just telling each other to shut up constantly. He passes it to the wing. Yeah, out to the centre. To the wing. Like, <laughs> fucking hell. Who are these cunts? Like? <laughs> oh, God. All right, peeps. Love yous and leave yous. Thanks for coming up, guys. We've got uh, another edition coming up potentially uh, the next couple of days too. Uh, special guest who has ran, who's just completed the Great Wall of China Marathon. So That's awesome. Fresh content coming at you. Hang in there, you freaks. Peace. <laughs>